When I first started wrestling, I actually started at a small school called Kaida Pro, and I trained there for about a year, year and a half, putting up, taking down rings, just trying to learn. And it wasn't until I transferred to Maryland Championship Wrestling that I really started to make real strides. And it really opened up a lot of doors for me. For the first time, I actually got a chance to train with more women. It was tough, it was just different. It was different because there weren't women training to be wrestlers. And out of that, I got signed with Ring of Honor. That opportunity then opened up the doors for me at TNA. Raven asked me, Alexis Lurie, who was so young and knew nothing, to be a part of the gathering and to be able to sit with him and learn and to be able to partner with a CM Punk or my buddy Julio De Niro and to be part of something that was magical. It was, you know, TNA kind of really getting off the ground. To be able to sit and learn really launched my career because it put me in a spotlight position that women weren't really in. I was in a top spot. I was working with Raven. I was working with Jeff Jarrett. And that's really when I started to build steam. And so I went to Jeff and I was like, Jeff, I just got an opportunity to go to WWE. And he said, go, please go. But he's like, this door is always open for you. You're a TNA family and you always will be. And that has always remained true because I've always felt like TNA impact, it's always been a home for me went to developmental. For the first time, like really moving away from my family, everything to Louisville. I got to train with some incredible people and there's still times that I look back and I go like, God, those were some of the greatest years. Then I finally got an opportunity to debut on WWE TV. It was immediately aligned with one of the most iconic storylines and one of my greatest friendships in my wrestling career and Trish Stratus. And she and I had this like certain bit of magic that we just meshed. It launched me for the rest of my career. So I'm always grateful for that. And I had an amazing run. Was one of the key women of the division for almost five years there. And then obviously I left. And you know, when I left WWE that first time, I was really at this crossroads of like, what, what now? Because in my mind I had achieved so much and I had achieved the dream. And now I'd lost the dream. And then came in back again. an opportunity to really like have a soul searching moment of going like, okay, who am I and what do I want to do? You know, I'm a country girl at heart. I always have been I'm from a small town. I just, you know, Montpelier, Virginia, blink and you'll miss it. I just wanted to acknowledge that of like what I came from and my heritage is being Native American, but also, you know, coming up with little to nothing and, and that, that struggle and, and why I started on the journey in the first place, and then Hardcore Country was born. Hardcore Country! Hey, hey, can't you see? I'm a rockin' southern girl running wild and free. I took a real stock of the landscape at Impact Wrestling and what the women were doing there and being able to do and the opportunities that the knockouts were given. It was so different than what I was used to. Impact was such a catalyst in this rise of respect for women's wrestling. I was such at this like, you know, redefining place of my life. And then in walks this handsome gentleman. And I remember I was, okay, so I was sitting in the ring with Al Snow and Lisa Marie. And Lisa will tell you the story too and totally was like, oh my God, who is this guy? And I, because I'm a jokester, I was like, oh, I'm a looking and I'm a liking. Totally didn't think he would hear me and he heard me. I was mortified. And then he spoke with a British accent, mind blown. There's a reason for everything because had I never left or lost that dream and then go to Impact with all these brand new opportunities and these exciting doorways that just started kind of appearing and then I met Nick who loved my life and now you know a few years later was pregnant with Donovan and surprise you know I was at a place where I honestly thought my television wrestling career was over when I got a call from the WWE office and, and 
Hunter wanted me to come in to wrestle Asuka. I had no idea. I had no idea that the, out of that match would come the opportunity to come back full time and Hunter called me to come back full time. I thought maybe there was a chance to like really just wrap up my career right and go out with a bang. Yeah, I was grateful to be there and I had so much fun, but you know, it, it wasn't the, I guess the curtsy to my career th that I wanted. I wasn't satisfied. And I think that's okay for me to say that I wasn't satisfied with that like button on the end of my career. But when I left there, like I had unfinished business and I just wanted to wrap up my career right. That's why I came back to Impact, really. That's that's the, the truth. And the bar had been raised so high for the standard of women's wrestling. Like I wanted an opportunity to remind people before I bowed out of the game of why I was Mickey James. The fact that I can still go out there and deliver because I love this business. I've, I've given everything for this business and I gave everything for this business because it's given me everything. When you come from nothing and you feel like you have to become something and the people that you love and to be able to take care of those people and to take care of the ones that you love the most to get people out of the cycle of just never having enough. Wrestling gave me my dreams of stuff that I dreamed about when I was a little girl. I can be a star one day. And I didn't know how and I didn't know when and I didn't know why, but I knew I would do it and I knew that my mom would never have to worry about whether the lights were gonna be on. My mom worked two jobs. And my dad worked two jobs. And my stepdaddy worked two jobs. And they all, all they wanted was to provide a better life for us and to give us opportunities. And so all I ever wanted was to be able to give them back so that way they could retire and just enjoy life because they worked so hard. And to hopefully give somebody who feels like they're Maybe they, you know, they don't come from much and, and they don't deserve the world, that you do deserve the world. It doesn't matter what you come from. All that matters is what you can do out there, you know, and you just have to believe in you. And if I, if I, if I could just help one person do that, then maybe it was all worth it.